welcome back to the Form channel. Thanks for tuning in. As you can probably hear, they are rebuilding the supermarket. So there will be some construction work. And they have informed me that it will last for about uh, three months. So I hope you will not be too annoyed when I'm vlogging from my terrace. But anyway, this is the night sky October update. So without further ado, let's get into this video. So let's first check out the comments that are currently within our solar system in October 2020. And uh, let me just focus on the laptop that I have over here. So when you are interested in comets, you can always go to this website, uh, theskylive.com. And you have a particular section on comets, so you can just click on that section. And then um, you will be getting the latest information of all of the comments that are currently in our own solar system. It's really a beautiful website. Check it out. And as you can see, unfortunately, uh, the comets that are currently in our solar system, they are all above the observed magnitude of uh, 8. So we have here Comet 88P Howell is 8.8 .8 observed magnitude. We have Comet uh, Neowise. Uh, of course, we enjoy that already during spring and summertime. Uh, it's currently at magnitude 9.4 or observed magnitude 9.4. And it gets worse from there. So we have Comet C2020 M3 Atlas. It's currently at 11.1. So I would say that... Wait, let's turn the camera again. So I would say that a comet needs to be at least observed magnitude 8 or lower in order for us to capture that comet with a telescope, like an amateur telescope, uh, or catching it with some binoculars, or even uh, being able to see it with a naked eye. So uh, unfortunately, uh, we had a very nice streak of comets during the spring and summertime, but now uh, we seem to have run out of at least visible comets. So uh, yeah, let's hope that uh, some comet will become visible again soon. So let's move on to planets. And of course, the most exciting thing is that Mars will be at opposition in October 2020. And let me just show you because this is a very interesting chart on my laptop here. So right, so the, the current opposition will occur during, I think, the second week of all, uh, October. So the 9th or the 10th of October, you can see here that Mars will reach its closest distance from Earth. And for this year, this is 62 uh, million kilometers. And that is a pretty good because uh, when we are going to look at the next opposition, the next opposition will be at about two years from now, of course. And uh, then you can see that the closest approach will be 81 million kilometers uh, in 2022. And then in 2025, um, it will be at 96 million kilometers. So right now, we have a pretty favorable uh, opposition uh, with a closest distance of 62 million kilometers. <laughs> So this brings me to a little bit of a painful subject. So for those of you who are following me, you know that I bought the classical Cassegrain 8-inch F12 telescope. And I would really love to use that telescope to image uh, Mars and also the other planets, of course. Uh, but I have been doing my best to collimate this telescope. I made a video on how to collimate the telescope with a Cheshire eyepiece if you're interested, so check that out. And um, yeah, I also been focusing on the stars a lot, but uh, I'm not getting the razor sharp images I was hoping to get. And don't get me wrong, it might be due to uh, like city sky conditions, which are suboptimal. Uh, yeah, but still I'm really thinking about what to do next. And uh, telescope service has been really understanding. And they have told me that they could send me a laser collimator. So this is an advanced uh, collimation uh, uh, tool actually for classical Cassegrains to really nail your collimation um, but I also saw that it involves quite some steps to go through that uh, laser collimation procedure uh, so I'm also thinking about just returning the telescope and maybe uh, getting a Celestron Edge HD, HD an 8 inch 
I could use that for some uh, planetary imaging as well as some deep sky imaging. I was thinking about using a Celestron C8 Edge HD maybe for, um, for galaxy season uh, next year. That would be great, I think, in combination with my ZWO 1600 Mono Pro. Uh, I would get some uh, really close up views of, for instance, the Whirlpool <coughs> and the Pinwheel Galaxy. So I'm really thinking about that. If you have any thoughts on this, uh, please leave a comment in the comment section below and I will check it out. Thanks. So let's check out some of the beautiful deep sky objects that are available for us to image in October 2020. And um, yeah, for those of you who are not using Stellarium, let's get into Stellarium here. Um, you have this little button on the bottom of your screen. When you click that particular icon, this is the yeah, like a galaxy whirlpool kind of icon. Um, when you switch that on, you will just be able to see all of the deep sky objects that are available in your particular um, location uh, at a particular time. So I'm here in Utrecht, the Netherlands, the Northern Hemisphere at the 16th of October at midnight basically. And um, yeah, I have to mention some of the, I would say, beginner targets, but they are just beautiful targets for any astrophotographer to image, of course. Uh, and the first one is, of course, the Andromeda Galaxy in the constellation Perseus, I would say. No, the constellation Andromeda, of course, I'm sorry. <laughs> and it is very high up in the south sky and will be moving towards the southwest. This uh, Andromeda galaxy is one of the biggest galaxies you can capture. So you can see here this red uh, triangle. It represents my personal field of view that I am getting using my wide field 80 mm f6 refractor with my ZWO 1600 Mono Pro camera. And this is actually, a, a, it can be compared to a DSLR view with a small refractor. Uh, so you can see here I have a 2 degree by 1.3 degree view and it barely fits the Andromeda Galaxy. That's how big it is. So even if you have just a small DSLR camera, you can already capture this beautiful galaxy. And uh, the only thing I would say is get away from light polluted areas because in the city uh, uh, you will not be so successful in imaging the Andromeda Galaxy because this is a wide, uh, a broadband target. Meaning that this galaxy emits light at all parts of the light spectrum. So you want to get away from the city, you want to get away from light pollution in order to really get a good picture of the Andromeda galaxy. And uh, maybe a good alternative is also the Triangulum galaxy. Uh, also very famous of course, you can see that's a little bit less big in terms of apparent size as compared to the Andromeda galaxy when you look at the red rectangle here. Um, and the third, yeah, maybe beginner target, but just a beautiful target to image is also the Pleiades here. So the Pleiades also a very big target, I would say, if you're just starting out with a DSLR and a small telescope or just a DSLR camera, just try to focus on the Pleiades, try to uh, capture that. Um, so you can see they are nicely situated here in the south, Andromeda uh, highest up, then Triangulum, and here you have the Pleiades. And then in terms of galaxy, oh no, in terms of nebulae, I'm sorry. Um, I'm a little bit on the fence because uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, of course, we have this nice, uh, uh, these nice nebulae uh, located in the constellation Cygnus. So the Crescent Nebulae, the Veil Nebulae, uh, Nebula, and also the North America, the Pelican Nebula, etc. Uh, they are still visible, you can still image them, but they are <coughs> moving closer towards the West. So I would actually... Uh, maybe advice to instead of capturing these kind of nebulae you also could capture during summertime just look towards the east because you will have um, Cassiopeia for instance and in Cassiopeia you will have the Sol and Heart Nebula also very interesting and they will be moving up in the night sky actually instead of down so the Sol Nebula, the, the Heart Nebula, the Fish Head Nebula they are all very nice nebulae to image I would say and of course then we have also the Wizard Nebula, it's a little bit further away, can I see it here? Right here, my computer, it's, it's, it's close to the zenith. <laughs> so that would be also be a very good uh, target to image, the Wizard Nebula. You can see here, it's a little bit smaller as compared to the Heart Nebula for instance, but still very big, nice nebula with some beautiful structures to image uh, during the month of October in the Northern Hemisphere. What? 428 posts already? 
So guys, thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing all of your heart astrophotography work with me on Instagram using my hashtag night sky astro forum hashtag NSSFO. Um, already 428 messages or posts. That's really great. And um, yeah, I know that back in May, like four or five months ago, I started this hashtag just to uh, to inspire each other to go out there and do some deep sky astrophotography. So I'm really honored to see that uh, yeah, a lot of you just use the hashtag and uh, yeah, share your beautiful work with me. So you can just see here, we have this beautiful wall of amazing astrophotography pictures. So um, if you want to check that out, just type in hashtag NSSFO on Instagram. And um, I checked out the most recent posts uh, in September. And yeah, according to me, four posts really stood out. So the first picture I wanted to share with you comes from Frank13678. And uh, Frank, he's a German astrophotographer and he has been supporting the channel for quite some time now, uh, sending in different pictures um, using the hashtag NSSFO. So thank you so much, Frank, for sharing all of your hard work. And I thought this is a particularly nice picture because it shows you what you can do with a color camera and some uh, duo or trio narrowband filters that are on the market today. So in this case, Frank, uh, he used his ZWO ASI 071 color camera in combination with an Astro Duo narrowband filter. And you can really see that, uh, yeah, he took 30 pictures, uh, five minute exposure time each. Of course, he has this big uh, refractor, 115 millimeter refractor uh, that allows him to really zoom in on the Eastern Veil Nebula you are seeing. And also the guiding went pretty well, I think, with the EQ6R Pro, the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount. It really allowed Frank to guide for multiple minute, uh, minutes and uh, still getting round stars, so that's really nice. Uh, I just wanted to show you that with a color camera and a narrowband uh, a filter, a duo narrowband in this case, you can really see the nice red hydrogen uh, part of the Eastern Veil Nebula and also the cyan, like the oxygen part of the nebula as well. So uh, thanks Frank for sending in this picture and showing what you can do with a color camera and uh, a duo narrowband filter. Um, I wanted to uh, build on that by also showing you the picture of Rutger Bus. Uh, Rutger has a very uh, has this wide field setup. He's using a William Optics GT71, so he gets a wider field of view as compared to Frank. So Frank zoomed in on the Eastern Veil Nebula with his 115 millimeter refractor, but when you have this wide field uh, refractor, a 71 millimeter in this case, you can see that Rutger uh, was able to capture almost every uh, all of the nebula that are part of the east uh, of the Veil Nebula in general. So you can see here you have the Eastern Veil Nebula, the Western Veil Nebula, Pickering Triangle. So that's a really nice picture, and you can just take it using a wide field setup. Um, he did some hardcore narrowband imaging here. So he used his uh, mono camera, the ZWO 1600 Mono Pro, like I have, um, but also C. I think he used his mono because. Um, I'm seeing here different narrowband filters, the sulfur, the hydrogen alpha and the oxygen filters were used. Also five minute exposures and of course some uh, uh, compensation frames as well. So really nicely done uh, Rutger, uh, congratulations and thank you so much for sharing this picture with us. So let's move on to uh, Astro Ha Jong uh, or Hey Jong Kim I think. And Astro Hajong, he shared his uh, picture of the Andromeda Galaxy. And I think this is a very nice example to sh that shows you that you don't need very expensive equipment to start astrophotography. So in this case, he just used a Canon EOS 2000D, so a stock DSLR camera. It's not a, a modified camera, so a lot of DSLRs uh, for astrophotography, they uh, remove the IR, IR cut filter to get more of the um, infrared signal. Um, but uh, in this case, it's just a stock camera. So the IR cut filter is still in place. And, and you can see that it doesn't matter for the Andromeda Galaxy so much because you can still image it with a regular DSLR. Um, uh, and also he just used his, um, his DSLR lens, the EFS 55 to 250 millimeter lens here. And he used a Bresser equatorial mount, the Exos 1, for guiding, but he didn't use any 
uh, for tracking, I have to say, the Brasser EQ mount for tracking, the Exos one, but he didn't use any PhD2 guiding. So, yeah, really, it shows you that you can make a nice picture of the Andromeda Galaxy, and here he has a starless picture as well. So, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Astro Hajong, for sharing your hard work with us. Um, and I wanted to close with Manolis uh, Pitt. Um, he lives on Gios, Greece. I shared a picture of him, uh, of, of his work before. And I really like this one because it shows you the Trifid Nebula. This is this broadband galaxy, oh, galaxy, <laughs> broadband nebula, I'm sorry. And the Trifid Nebula, uh, yeah, you really need some dark skies to really get, get these pictures out. So uh, yeah, in this case, uh, use the Skywatcher Explorer 130 PDS. So this is just a Newtonian reflector, not the most expensive ref uh, reflector out there. Skywatcher Nex6 Pro and his Nikon D5200 DSLR camera. I think this is really a good result, uh, especially also when looking at the, uh, the gear. And yeah, what did he do? He, he took uh, 200 pictures of 60 seconds at ISO 1000. And of course he took some compensation frames as well, darks and bias frames. About three hours of integration time. I think this is really a very nice result, uh, uh, Manolis. And uh, thank you so much for sharing that picture with us. Hi guys, uh, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking on the button on the bottom right of the screen. Um, also for my regular viewers, I have to give you a heads up that in October and November, I will be doing a lot of teaching at the university in the Netherlands. Uh, so probably I will not be uploading on a weekly basis, a little bit less. Uh, we will see how it goes, but of course uh, my intention is to keep on uploading, but maybe a little bit less uh, during these two months. Um, so yeah, if you want, uh, check out my channel for other videos. And uh, in the meanwhile, I would like to wish you clear skies. Bye bye.